let's remember a little bit about rational exponents. So the first thing to remember is that the top gives the power and the bottom gives the root. So x to the one half is second root, which is a square root of x to the first. x to the two thirds is a cube root, because the three is on the bottom, of x squared x to the one-third is again a cube root but only x to the first. Now let's take this a step further and let's think about what the graphs of these things look like. Well the first one and the third one here we know what those graphs look like. An x to the one-half starts at zero zero 1 over 1 up and flattens out as it goes. And x to the 1 third, cube root of x, it looks very similar over for positive stuff. It's a little steeper and then flats out a little bit more, but honestly you probably wouldn't notice that if you were just looking at a graph. But the big thing is, is that it also is an odd function and does the same thing over for the negative side. Now, the thing about those two graphs, just like when we talked about the graph of x squared was very similar to the graph of x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, any positive even power, it's a similar kind of thing here. These graphs look very similar to a bunch of others. In particular, this one here, any time when you've got x to a power, that's a fraction, and p is odd, and q is even. Anytime the top of the fraction is odd and the bottom of the fraction is even, it's going to look like this. So, just throwing out a few, so x to the 1 fourth is pretty much going to look like that. x to the 3 eighths is going to look like that. x to the three halves is going to look like that. Anytime the top of the fraction is odd and the bottom's even. Actually, eh, let's, let me change that a little bit. I'm going to throw x to the three halves out. Let's, and because there is another rule here that the bottom has to be bigger than the top. We're only looking at actual things that are less than one when we're looking at these graphs so but at the same time something like x to the oh one sixth would look like this this one here it's the same kind of thing anytime I've got something where I've got x to a fraction and the bottom's bigger than the top. And this one is that both the top and the bottom are odd. So the same basic shape here would apply to x to the three fifths x to the 1 7th, x to the 5 9th, any time both the top and the bottom are odd numbers, and again the bottom has to be bigger than the top. But what about this x to the 2 thirds? Notice that both of these things had the top number being odd, and this x to the 2 thirds has the top number being even. 
Well, this one looks just a little bit weird. It still has the same basic shape over to the right that both of the others did. But instead of going down like this and being an odd function, it's actually an even function. It's symmetric about the y-axis. Now, again, this is x to a fraction. The bottom has to be bigger than the top. In this case, the only thing that matters is that the top is even. It doesn't matter whether we've got an even or an odd number on the bottom, as long as the top is even. So, I said if we got x to the 2 thirds, if I had x to the 2 fifths, if I had x to the 4 uh, sevenths, if I had x to the 2 sixths. Now, just one last thing, and this is something that's really subtle here. Notice that x to the 2 sixths is different from x to the 1 third. This one is has a graph that looks like this. This one has a graph that looks like this. Now, for positive values, absolutely they're the same thing. That would reduce down. But because of the way it affects negatives versus positives, you actually can't reduce the fractions when we're talking about trying to see what the graph looks like. You can't reduce the fractions when you're dealing with negative numbers and rational exponents.